Welcome back. This is Good to Know. I'm Lindsay Boach, and we're telling positive stories here today, trying to give you a little break from your crazy, busy, maybe stressful life. And we're going to continue with the surprises in New York City. I'm tired of people putting their fingernails on the train. <laughs> For the past 15 years, Lance Weiss has been a regular in the New York City comedy scene. Performing is his bread and butter. So when the pandemic shut down restaurants, bars and clubs, he needed to find a quick way to pay bills. There's a lot of positive things that can come out of that. Um, oh, how are you that? yes! That's right, the comedian tapped into the uncharted territory of Zoom bombing, getting hired, even by some Fortune 500 companies, to bring in the laughs. I'm learning it as I go, right? I don't have it figured out. I'm not, I didn't anticipate my uh, current career path to be a meeting bomber. The idea to professionally Zoom bomb came to Weiss after he himself was on the receiving end of a hack. It's now inspired an unlikely side gig. What is happening? <laughs> you guys didn't have a password on here, and now you got this. <laughs> and some of these are high, high level. Uh, vice presidents, C-suite execs are in the meetings, and I'm like, oh my gosh. From performing stand-up to roasting other employees, the comedian offers a wide range of moderately priced services, with a goal to lighten the mood in a somewhat heavy time. <laughs> <laughs> it shows your employee that you did something in this weird time that we're all living in, you did something thoughtful for, for that person. Remember our first honeymoon? We went to Niagara Falls. Yeah, we was just starting out. So it was Niagara Falls. When acting is what you love, you find a way. We're still plugging away and going for it. It's, you know, theater is what we what drives us and it what brings entertainment to everyone else and that's our, our passion. So. Of course, Lola de Villers and Stuart Champeau would normally do their acting on stage, but performances at the Rogue Theater have been put on hold. Uh, we got canceled, so we were losing our minds trying to think of something to do. <laughs> They've since found a way to use that acting talent, putting these sketches of The Carol Burnett Show on YouTube. What did he say you had well, other than insomnia? But they aren't the only ones making people laugh. Oh, crap. <laughs> this is the Rogue Theater's funniest video contest. In the natural habitat, pet rocks as they call them. Put an acorn in my paw, shove it up my nose! And they're hilarious what people can come up with. We're excited to see what the next round brings us as far as home mm -hmm. videos. Yes, Shampoo and DeVillers have opened up a second round of videos. He's got to keep going. It's what we do. But before you go any further, a warning from the experts. Uh, once you start, you never want to stop. A chocolate shop in Indiana got a sweet surprise, a little treat for them and for their generous community. At the beginning of this week, Morgan Roddy was scrambling, trying to figure out how to keep the queer chocolatier open, the business she and her wife Sherry own. I really need to come up with like an emergency plan. I need to, you know, find out how am I going to make my rent? Do I need to find a job to pay the rent because I don't have the business to pay the rent? She never imagined the note she wrote about the hard decision she was facing would lead to thousands of dollars being donated to keep the place open. One minute. I'm crying because I think the business is about to be done and I'm still about ready to cry, but for a good reason, right? <laughs> but if it was left up to her, this might not have happened. You know, it's kind of hard to be a business and ask for fundraising. It just doesn't feel quite right in some ways. That's when a regular customer of theirs got involved. Daniel reached out and he was just like, I want to I wanna do my best to help support your business. No, it's something I definitely never expected. You know, when I started, I know that uh, Queer Chocolate Chair meant a lot to me and to my friends. So I knew it would get some sort of attention, but I never expected in less than 24 hours to raise as much as we did. The GoFundMe Daniel Todd started has raised more than $9,000 in just two days, and that number keeps on going up. So having queer sober spaces is something that's super important, and really, where we live, the Queer Chocolatier is one of those only spaces. They should be able to still access a community where they are authentically themselves. Um, without having to wait to turn 21 to be into a gay bar. Thanks to the outpouring of support, it's looking like the Queer Chocolatier will be open, serving Muncie and the surrounding communities, in more ways than one, for quite some time. It's just like a really great space for people to 
feel comfortable, get to know each other, um, get to know me, I get to know them. Here's a truck with a bright future. This is Griff. It runs off the sun, 100% electric. The goal is to drive across the U.S. this year, coast to coast. That feeling you get of, of fulfillment, satisfaction, of if, when I make it across the country, like, that's something that I can hang my hat on for the rest of my life. Josh Hill built Griff from scratch. He plans to start in Boise, Idaho, before driving down to California and then over to Florida. If I don't make it, uh, keep trying because I know it's completely possible to do this. I'm gonna persevere and try to prove that it can be done. Keep on trucking, Josh. The sun is shining down on you. In Virginia, these three girls definitely have a bright future ahead. Lemonade, come, come and get your lemonade. These three young entrepreneurs have made quite an impact at the Colonial Heights Food Pantry. We raised $184.13. And they did it one cup at a time. By selling lemonade. It all started about a month ago. I had the idea for a lemonade stand. Then I told Tessa, and she thought that it was a really good idea. Tessa Powell lives next door. And along with five-year-old Chandler Fontaine, the three set up shop. Lemonade stand, 50 cents. All proceeds go to Colonial Heights Food Pantry. And reaction was swift. They just said, like, thank you. The trio set up on two different occasions. When people were buying the lemonade, did they only give you 50 cents? No. no. They usually gave us one dollar. The ultimate goal was quite simple. My goal was to raise a lot of money for the food pantry because we knew that they were running out, so I wanted to get a lot of money so they could buy a lot of food for the people that don't have food. Those at the food pantry quite impressed with the effort. She just knocked my socks off, not just with the amount that she did, but just with the um, passion that she did it with and the passion that she described doing it. Hammonds told Haley that by buying through Feedmore, her donation was much bigger than she thought. And her 184 roughly dollars is actually 4,600 pounds of that produce. Bella Karaji knows how to fill stay-at-home time. With purpose, she asked her mom to show her the sewing ropes. Oh, wait. She's like, Mom, you know what? You're amazing because you know how to stitch, and you're teaching me that. Because of this, uh, she basically came a little closer to me. And in this pandemic, the Mason High School sophomore is sharing an interest with her dad, too the news. I never watched the news and my dad is now obsessed with finding everything about coronavirus and he makes me watch it and I mean it interests me too. But this 15 year old isn't just listening. State leaders motivated her to act. I got the idea of making hygiene kits because I watched Governor and Dr. Amy Acton talk about what people are going through, and it was shocking. What really hit her was the plight of people who, unlike her, have no roof over their heads, no safe place to call their own. So she's making hygiene kits that are free for families experiencing homelessness. Our duty to humankind is to help. And she's doing just that. Bella already had her own business making something called Bella Butter to keep hands soft. Now it's evolved and become a bigger philanthropic effort with a mission to keep hands clean as well. And that sewing know-how she got from her mom? It's all to make sure her kits come complete with facial coverings. With the mask, the hand sanitizer, the soap, and the Bella Butter, it's not hard to see that each of these bags is homemade and from the heart. Bella says she's delivered 50 kits and has an order for 400 more. It's her focus when she's not doing her remote schoolwork. Yes, she's balancing both in the name of being a good human, taking what she learned. It's during this pandemic time, everyone should think that it is we, it's not just me. And walking the talk. In a way, she's teaching us all how to be in tough times. It's important to help and it just makes me happy. Some frontline medical workers in New York found a surprise that really rocks. The kids in their community designed a rock garden to show their gratitude. We 
wanted our children to know that they are important members of the community and their voices can be heard in this time. More Rex. And they can send out messages of gratitude, of encouragement, and of love. Some people did super small ones, some others did larger ones. I think each child painted like one, two, or three of these. Each family contributed. Yeah. Finally, the surprising way an 11-year-old celebrated her birthday in New York. This will definitely feed your soul. Alana Bell's idea of a great 11th birthday is helping people in need. I was watching church from the chapel and they were talking about humility and putting others first before yourself. And I was thinking that maybe we should do that too. Instead of having a birthday parade and gifts, Alana asked all her friends and family to drive by and donate canned goods to benefit Feed More Western New York. Where's the birthday girl? Happy here. birthday, honey. That one That's basket? not much of a gift, but you're giving gifts to other people. Huh? She's thought of it on her own and she really just wants to help people. I'm just so proud of her that she wants to give rather than receive on our birthday, especially at a time like this. Last month, Alana was diagnosed with Bell's palsy, a condition that causes facial paralysis. She was really upset about having half of her face paralyzed and she said, I just want to make other people smile for my birthday. Fortunately, Bell's palsy is temporary and soon Alana will look back on her birthday with a huge smile. She says she's grateful for her family who's been helping her with the tent, balloons and the donation collection. They have been celebrating my birthday all day and I'm so happy to have them as my family. Happy birthday, Alana. We saw a lot of surprises today. Some made us laugh, some definitely caught us off guard. How can you make someone's day with a surprise? There's a lot of good people out there doing great things to help make people smile. And isn't that good to know?